talk about a topic that made people start to hate math. The first time I ever hated math was when I had to memorize my multiplication tables. That was the worst thing I ever did in math up to that point. However, at this time of my life, and well, well, before now, I have been really, really grateful that I knew my math tables, my multiplication tables, because even though you can have a calculator to do your multiplying for you, the calculator is not gonna factor things. Factoring is when you break it back down from the answer to the multiplication problem. And if you don't recognize the answers to all the multiplication tables, then you're gonna be in serious trouble when it comes to factoring things. So first of all, let's talk about some definitions. The definition of factors are things that are multiplied together. The factors of any number are numbers that will go into it evenly because that means you can multiply that factor times another factor and get the number. So if the number, if a number will go into another number, therefore it is a factor of that number. Factor can either be a noun, such as when you are saying three is a factor of 12, or factor can be a verb, an action verb, where you take a number and rewrite it as a product, which is the result you get from multiplying. So you rewrite the number as a multiplication problem. The factors of 12 are any positive integers, and sometimes we're including negatives, but usually we're referring to positive whole numbers that will go into 12 evenly. So the factors of 12, the numbers that'll go into it evenly are one, two, three, four, six, and 12. Notice that these always come in pairs unless it's a perfect square. So one times 12, two times six, and three times four all give us 12. Prime factorization is when a number is rewritten as a product where all of the factors listed in this problem are prime numbers. Prime numbers are numbers that will not divide by anything but themselves or one. Because of this restriction, it may take more than two numbers to give us the original number. For instance, the number 12 could be rewritten as three times four. Four, however, is not a prime number because it can be further broken down. So that becomes two times two. So 12 can be broken down as three times two times two. What if instead of three times four, we had initially broken the 12 down as two times six? Now this is still not a prime factorization because six can be broken down farther. Six is two times three, so this becomes two times two times three. Notice that this is exactly the same combination of numbers that we got before. So while a number may have multiple factorizations, it's only going to have one prime factorization, as long as you don't take the order that you wrote the factors down into account. What happens if you've got a large number and you want to break it down into its prime factorization? Let's say, I don't know, 342. Now, it actually doesn't matter how you start breaking it down. Uh, one of the processes you might take is to start out with two and ask yourself, will two go into this number? Well, of course, you can easily tell if it's an even number, if it ends with 
zero, two, four, six, or eight, then it'll divide by two. So I could rewrite this as two times 171. Now, 171, that's an odd sort of number. Well, actually it is an odd number, so we know it's not gonna divide by two anymore. Let's step up one and see if it'll divide by three. How can you tell if a number will divide by three? Notice that with the number 171, if we get the sum of the digits, if we add the digits in this number together, so the one plus the seven plus the one actually adds up to nine because nine is a multiple of three because nine will divide by three, 171 is gonna divide by three. So don't lose the two that we started with already. Now we've got a three or three that 171 divided by three is gonna be 57. Well, is 57 prime? What about 57? Well, 57 divide by three. If we take the 57, notice that five plus seven is 12. 12 divides by three, therefore 57 divides by three. So once again, don't lose the two, don't lose the three. Now, 57 breaks down into three times 19. 19 is a prime number. 19 will not divide any farther. It only divides by itself, 19 and one. So the prime factorization of 342 is two times three times three times 19. This isn't the only way you could have done it. You might've noticed originally that it divided by six or it divided by nine. Uh, I doubt if too many people here have, have memorized their 19th tables. I certainly haven't. But as I showed you before, it doesn't matter how you break it down, even if every number that you've got is a composite number. A composite number is any number that's not prime. Numbers are either prime, won't break down, or composite, will break down. So even if all the factors that you break it down as are composite numbers, you keep breaking every one of them down until you have nothing there but prime numbers. Make sure you don't lose any of your factors. The original problem the original, the, the factored problem has to still equal the original number. So 19 times three times three times two is gonna be 342. So this is how you factor numbers. Factoring numbers has oodles and oodles of useful purposes in math. It's really a necessary thing to be able to do to get any farther than basic arithmetic. So I hope this helps and I will talk to you later. Bye.